Hey folks, Ariel over here. No, nope, that's not me. That is my one brother, Micah, who a bunch of you folks have seen in various videos this summer. He moved fairly close to Clay and I this summer. He's a bit of a chicken whisper. Anyway, it's been nice having him nearby, and we one of the projects we spent a good bit of time on this summer was building a, uh, helping him build a cabin, which he is now living in, and a bunch of you have been waiting to see this video of what that looked like. Um, I have a collection of some video clips and a bunch of photos and stuff that we took through the course of the summer and fall and early winter. As you'll see, we didn't get it really done until there was snow coming down, but here you go. So his spot is on a little bit of a hillside, a pretty steep hillside actually. And so the first thing that was involved was uh, Clay taking the, the heavy machinery over and doing some of the dirt work to get a level spot to put the cabin on. So there's kind of a, a bit of a flat spot to start with in kind of a little gully um, area and made it more flat um, by regrading some of the, the hills out and leveling it into a just a, a larger spot. So this does take a significant portion of the video space because it was a significant portion of the total work. Also there's a bit of a switchbacky lane up the hillside to get to this spot and so some of that had to be graded out as well so it was wide enough to get a, a vehicle up and not just a, a walking path. But as you can see it's a pretty gorgeous spot in the world with a spectacular view that he now has. So anyway I did a whole bunch of dirt work to get things leveled in this spot, uh, regrade that bank to a, a slope that will hold, and then he used the backhoe to pull some of the, the topsoil and you know roots of all the wild plants that were growing there back down over it so that it will, you know, by spring it'll all have grown in and you won't be able to tell it was moved around like that and got a level spot ready to start the cabin foundation on. Once we had a spot all leveled out, then the next bit of this construction goes very much like the way you saw the chicken barn uh, get assembled, actually. We had some more of these um, big skids, so this cabin could technically be moved. Uh, need a fairly big piece of machinery to do that. And so once again, after lots and lots of dirt work, this part feels like it takes forever. And getting these leveled, squared up, evened out, um, you know, turning a, a round base into something you can build a square platform on takes some work. So this takes a little bit of time to get this all ready. And doesn't feel like you're getting anywhere for quite a while to me. As you will see here toward the end, we did make it, uh, you know, to a finish point that it was livable before real winter set in, and he is living in this cabin right at the moment. Uh, come spring, there will be some more improvements and some more finishing touches. It's certainly not a finished work of art, but it seems to be working well, and he likes his place, so I'm glad we were able to help him do this. And then once we got done with this through the, you know, fall and winter, you've seen him over at our place 
helping us with a, quite a variety of other projects um, around here as well. So it's been been nice to have a, another useful person nearby to do some work back and forth with like that. See what our summer rains are like? This is a good rainstorm. Every now and then we get one bigger than this in the summer, but this is what most of them are like. We get most of our water as snow. Then once we got that foundation kind of set there for the cabin, we went back to doing a little more of the, the dirt work on the side of the lane to not make it just drivable, but to angle the, the slope so it would be stable. Different kinds of soil will hold at different angles, but doing the same thing as around the cabin site, you know, um, angling it at a slope that will hold and then scraping the topsoil back down over it so that all the wild stuff can go back to growing on that surface and prevent erosion. But we wanted to get that done before we got any you know fall snow or ice that would prevent being able to get the big machinery off the hill so as you can see we worked pretty late a bunch of nights doing this um, and got that all graded out now in the meantime micah as you can see there in that past photo for a second had been living on this little we call it the landing pad spot up on the hillside living on the landing pad in his little truck camper that's what he lived in all summer long he's a pretty tough and hardy fellow and and um, that's what he did. So anyway, here we first built the bottom of the floor so that we could screw it all down and then use the backhoe bucket to flip it over. Uh, Mike is a welder by trade and he built an extra little hook to um, bolt onto the backhoe bucket to make this possible. So that was the underside of the floor first and now you see it getting flipped over and set right side up, at which point we filled the whole thing with several layers of foam insulation so it's a very thoroughly insulated floor those are two by eights and then we could do the top of the floor and put sheeting on all of that um, which you can see there now we have a floor top and then we started to frame up the walls um, did that flat on on the floor and then stood the big wall up there with the, the backhoe and you can see the, the shorter wall being framed up on the other side, it's a, a shed roof style cabinet, as you're starting to see come together here. So we get a, one of the end walls put into there. And we did have some beautiful summer weather to do a bunch of this work. We got to have our first meal in the cabin, even though it wasn't really done, but it was a warm day. And so it was nice to sit in the shade of that wall and enjoy our lunch. Then we get started getting, you know, the outside sheeted. We tried to reuse as much um, secondhand material as we could. We didn't have quite as much left for this as we had when we did our chicken barn. So a bunch of it was new material. As the guys started getting the uh, wood put together, I started on painting it. Went with the same color scheme that we like for everything else because all three of us enjoy that. Then the guys were up um, putting the, the roof um, rafters on and getting that all framed up. I did a lot of carrying and handing and fetching and preparing food and all that, but it was nice to have the two of them working together. And in between, you can see I started caulking the the joints on the plywood and such and, and getting it painted. As there, the, the roof got sealed up. Now there was a sealed inside of the cabin. Well, except for no door or windows yet. Kind of sealed inside of the cabin. Anyway, um, we do eventually plan to put some siding on the outside but we did not get to that before winter so I simply caulked and painted the exterior of the plywood to see it caulked the cracks and painted the exterior of the plywood to seal it up for the winter um, and got some windows and doors starting to go in and my little caulking spackles all over and then a new coat of paint on top of them so now it's starting to look better and in the meantime Michael worked on building himself some garden beds he wants to do some of his own gardening in the the spring 
And back to inside, getting more windows put in, cut out a hole, be able to put a window in. We were able to acquire some secondhand windows and a few we had to buy new as well because could not find any secondhand ones in the area. The back, as you can see, the back of the roof is going to shed away from the entrance and so on into the hillside there. And then we got a chimney put in so that it can be heated with a wood stove. So after we finally got the roof sealed in, we cut a hole in it, which always feels like a silly thing to do to me, but that's what you have to do. So we got the, the ceiling box put in and all the parts for the chimney. And you can still see his camper park there. It's starting to get pretty late into the fall here and he's still living in his truck camper. And um, though the cabin is fully off grid right now, Clay wanted to wire some electrical stuff into there so it'd be an option down the road and currently it's set up where you could just plug a generator into it and power all those outlets if you wanted uh, but it is off grid and on a little solar setup then it snowed and we still didn't have things done so on this snowy day we scraped the snow off the the water shield and got the roofing on because it hadn't come in before that. So we were able to get it all roofed here in this snowstorm. It started just dumping snow right about as we got the last piece of tin put on. So we were thankfully got that on and could go back to working on stuff inside, like getting insulation in the walls and ceiling because that is needed to keep it warm. So that's starting to get insulated and then sheeted on the inside. Um, this is what I call ply walling, where instead of doing drywall, you just do plywood on the inside. It makes a very sturdy, stable finish. You can screw things anywhere you want to your wall. Don't even have to find a stud in general. And uh, it's a finish that we were all happy with. So it's nothing super fancy, but it worked. As the guys got that all put together, I was still helping with the smaller stuff. This also gave me some more opportunity to take pictures because they were doing all this bits and now we actually get the wood stove itself hooked up here and as you'll see here in a minute you probably recognize this wood stove it is the same one that was in my tiny house for a whole lot of years so if you're wondering about that there will be a video upcoming shortly on what is in our tiny house now because that is formerly my stove now in my brother's cabin and there we had a stove actually installed and ready to light so that was an exciting day because it was cold outside. This work, in case you're wondering, is all happening on the weekends. There, there's our using all our insulation scraps in one bay to uh, not have any waste at all. We didn't have any pieces left over. At this point, the cabin's getting cozy. Um, yeah, all this work was done on weekends uh, when the, the two men had off work. And that was finishing up the very, very last wall inside around the window and such, which then meant that during the week I could work on painting. So I got a first coat of paint on everything, then caulked the cracks in the drywall, and then a second coat of paint, at which point it looks pretty nice and bright inside. Still nothing fancy. Um, need some trim finished around the windows and so on, but as you can see, it was getting pretty snowy. I just kept the, the wood stove cooking and some windows open to ventilate and was able to get all, all this stuff done through the week. Meanwhile, some of the stuff had got moved into the cabin because at this point it's not very comfortable to be living in a canvas-sided truck camper outdoors. That's barely laying on top of the snow pile supervising. Uh, this is the last little bit of the second coat of paint in the one corner and then we added a sleeping loft area. So framed up this little partial loft. There's an egress window up there. That's why the second window was put up higher and made a sleeping loft area in the cabin. So that it's set up a lot like my tiny house, a little wider. It's a little bit bigger than the tiny house. This whole cabin is uh, 12 by 18. And so there's plenty of room to lay on the bigger end and sit up and so on. And then some storage down there in the, the skinny corner with the way the shed roof works. And at this point it is pretty cold and snowy. So Micah got moved in. Um, we, again, we were working until late at night and using headlights and flashlights. So then the cabin started to actually get a bit cozier. It's made a lot of improvement since then. It's very cozy under a starlit night. The little wood stove, of course, does an excellent job of keeping it cozy and warm. I was able to find a secondhand wool rug to put on the floor. There are lots and lots of wildlife on this hill. It's very close to our house, 
but just enough up on the hillside, kind of like my last uh, place that I lived, that there are just, you know, this hillside being the foothills of big mountains. There's just more wildlife there. I think there's like seven deer in this shot somewhere, along with at least one big muley buck. Um, they've gotten kind of used to Micah being there, and they don't seem too concerned about his presence at all. On the inside, the cabin itself is gradually getting cozier as we acquire um, better furnishings. You know, both my brother and I have been kind of keeping our eyes on all the, the local stuff people are giving away. He built himself a beautiful coat rack there by the door with a mud pan for the boots. Um, he's got the solar panels were right beside the house there and then we moved him a little bit further up the hill to get a little bit more sunshine in the winter he built a, a wooden ladder there to replace the the uh, aluminum one going up into the loft he's been growing his own sprouts on the windowsill uh, has a little shed that he keeps his extra tools in and a wood pile under the the tarp and um Again, it's nothing fancy, but he's got a, a good setup there that he is pretty comfortable with at the moment. He's keeping all the, the paths cleared to his compost pile and snowblower. So again, this cabin is all off-grid. He's got his little sink with uh, you know, basin that just drains into a bucket so he can use that water in the compost or gardening outside or whatever in the summer. Um, he's got a composting toilet of the bucket variety, heated with a wood stove. He carries water actually from the beautiful spring-fed water at our place up this hill to use because there is no well or spring on the hillside. As we find all the right secondhand pieces for cheap or free, there will be a little better kitchen setup, a little better bathroom setup, and it will continue to get a little more homey. But for now, there is a glimpse of the cabin. We helped him build this summer. We hope you enjoyed it. Come back next time for more adventures. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. watching.